Here's another example of how to use chemical analysis based upon what we learned so far using the ideal gas equation, using the definition of a mole, and using the definition of density. Alright, here we have an equation where we take carbon dioxide gas, add lithium hydroxide to it, which is an aqueous solution, it reacts with carbon dioxide, taking the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and then ending up in aqueous solution and water as a result. In other words, all the gas is then consumed. So let's say we start out with a 2 liter bottle that is filled with carbon dioxide at 1 atmosphere and 50 degrees centigrade and we pour into that an aqueous solution of lithium hydroxide. How much of that lithium hydroxide, how many grams will we need so that all of the carbon dioxide is, is used up and the pressure goes to zero. If we can then seal it off, put it in there, seal it off, shake it around, have the carbon dioxide absorbed by this reaction till there's no gas left in the bottle, the pressure should essentially then go to zero. So what is the um, amount of the lithium hydroxide in grams that we need to do that? So first of all, let's establish what we're looking for. We're looking for the mass. Mass of lithium hydroxide is equal to question mark. So now we want to compare the mass of lithium hydroxide to the number of moles of lithium hydroxide. So we can do that by saying that the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. So that means that from this equation, we can then say that the mass is equal to the number of moles of lithium hydroxide times the molar mass of lithium hydroxide. So that's how we're going to find the mass of that. That's what we're looking for. So we need to know the number of moles of lithium hydroxide. And since the information that we have in here is in terms of the carbon dioxide as one of the reactants, we have to somehow compare the number of moles of lithium hydroxide to the number of moles of carbon dioxide. All right, so the number of moles of lithium hydroxide is some number times the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Now take a look. For each one mole of carbon dioxide, we need two moles of lithium hydroxide. So the number of lithium, moles of lithium hydroxide is twice as much as the number of moles of carbon. So it would be two to one. So two times the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Okay, next, based upon what they gave us, we gave us, they gave us a volume of the carbon dioxide at one atmosphere and 50 degrees centigrade. So now we need to find the volume and relate that to the number of moles of carbon dioxide. So the equation, PV equals NRT will come in very handy. So there's our ideal gas equation. We're given the pressure, we're given the volume, we're given the temperature, we know the constant, so then we solve this for N, so the number of moles of carbon dioxide is equal to the pressure times the volume divided by the gas constant and the temperature. So that's how we find the number of moles of the carbon dioxide. We then convert that to the number of moles of lithium hydroxide. We then convert that to the mass of lithium hydroxide. So we have our strategy. So plugging in the pressure, we have 101,325 pascals. That's, of course, a standard unit for pressure. That's in terms of pascals or newtons per square meter. That's a little a right here. The volume, we were given it to us in terms of liters. Let's convert that to cubic meters, 0.002 meters cubed, divided by R, which is 8.314. That's joules per mole times Kelvin and multiply times the temperature, they say 50 degrees centigrade, so we have to add that to 273. So 273 plus 50 is equal to 323 Kelvin, so this becomes 323 Kelvin. So to go from centigrade to Kelvin degrees, we add 273 to that. Okay, now we have everything we need to know to find the number of moles of carbon dioxide needed. Well, I shouldn't say needed, but in the bottle, so we can, from that, compute the number of moles of uh, lithium hydroxide we're going to need. 101,325 times 0.002, divide by 8.314, and divide by 323 equals, and so that's equal to 0 0.07546 moles. <clears throat> So from that, we're now going to calculate the number of moles of lithium hydroxide. So the number of moles of lithium hydroxide is equal to two times the number of moles of carbon dioxide, which we just calculated, 0 0.07546. So times two, and we get 0 0.1509 moles. 
and that would be the number of moles of lithium hydroxide. So now we take that and put that in this equation. So the mass of lithium hydroxide is equal to, let me rewrite this a little bit, it's getting a little messy. So the mass of lithium hydroxide is equal to the number of moles of lithium hydroxide, which is 0 0.1509 moles, multiplied times the molar mass of lithium hydroxide. Now, approximately, the molar mass of lithium is about 7. Oxygen, 16. Hydrogen, 1. 7 plus 1 is 8, plus 16 is about 24. Pretty close. So 24 grams per mole. All right, so we multiply that times 24 equals, and that means that the mass of the lithium hydroxide required to get rid of all two liters of the carbon dioxide is 3.62 grams. And there you have it. So the strategy is always the same. Start out with the definition of the number of moles is mass per molar mass. So solve this for mass. Mass of number of moles times the mass per mole. Relate the number of mass, the, relate the, the number of moles of the lithium hydroxide to the number of moles of the carbon dioxide, which is the gas that gives all the information about. It's a two to one ratio. Then use the ideal gas equation to come up with the number of moles of carbon dioxide. Plug that in his equation to come up with the number of moles of lithium hydroxide. Plug that into this equation to find the mass of the lithium hydroxide. So strategy is, again, the same as in the previous examples. Very straightforward if you follow this pattern. And that's how you do that.